technical difficulties. Sorry. Microphone check. <laughs> All right. Yes? yes? All right. Now, hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, my microphone wasn't on. Um, thank you for being here today. We are, uh, this is two days of advanced razor yes. with myself, <laughs> Karina, and my really, one of my best friends ever, yes. Travis Speck, and he's here from New York City. He works at Sweet Caroline, and um, him and I met in 2004. Yeah, 2004. 2004 at Bumble and Bumble. When I moved to New York, I started, he was already working there as an assistant. Just a month before, oh, yeah. I started like literally one month before Karina. Yes. So I was still like fresh on the floor. You were still fresh, you were from California. From California. I was from California. I moved from San Francisco, had been here for 12 years. I worked at Architects and Heroes back in the day. I don't know if you know the salon. The um, salon was very, one of the best salons in the city. It was good back Yeah, then. and it was very Sassoon based, yeah. right? Very, it was all Vidal Sassoon. And then there were different, there were a lot of salons that came from that, um, from architects. It was like Cowboys and Angels and yeah, just everything kind of off, yeah. kind of offshoot from. As it does. Yeah, as it does. Yeah. I think the original Architects and Heroes space was where Cowboys and Angels still is, if it's on Powell Street. Yes. So and I of, do think they closed they did? recently. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, they closed. Right. Which is why we got Michelle, because Michelle used to work there. Yeah. And I was like, hey, you need a job. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we met 2004. I started as an assistant. I was terrified so in New York head. City. <laughs> <laughs> I was like always in the way. You know, I don't know if you guys ever had that uncomfortable like assistant position where you don't know what to do. You're just like, what do I do? Do I sweep? I don't know. And um, yeah, so welcome. And so Travis was so sweet. He came up to me and he goes, if you ever want to go model hunting sometime, I'll go with you. And I was like, in love. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that was part of your guys' training where you had to go no, find models. I just liked Karina when I saw her. I was like, I want to be her friend. And I never really do that, but I just was like, I think she's cool. And I don't know, it was just a vibe I got. And I was like, I'm going to go ask her if she wants to go model hunting. Because it was before, it was like when you actually had to go out and look for people on the before, street. Uh, internet. Before internet, I mean before internet. internet. <laughs> I mean, when we started, it was texting just started. So it was like, yes. texting was annoying. Texting so was it annoying. Was just, we had to just really hit the streets and like look for people, which was actually fun. I kind of preferred it. Yeah, because um, then you can see their hair, yeah, what their hair is really talk like. People into stuff, and then they sort of feel your energy and they trust you. I'm very like interactive in person. I'm still not a very good online meeting people kind of thing. Yeah. Although I know that's the way the world is now. Yeah. Do any of you guys have to do model hunting for, or did, or went yeah. through it? Yeah. Sometimes you're just eating in a restaurant. And you see like the waitress. You're like, oh, she'd be so cute with like a graduated bob. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, today I have Travis with me and I'm so excited because he's a wonderful educator and he's so knowledgeable and he's really kind and sweet. So, um, you know, it's so Thank nice to have you. Travis. My mom met him this morning and she was like, he's a ray of sunshine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you've yeah. met before, but he's, she spent some time with him this morning and made yeah. Webbles Rancheros. So good. <laughs> um, okay, so welcome to today. We are going to get started with introductions. I really want to know more about you guys that are here. Um, do you guys all know about the Pony app, the Pony Education app? No? Okay. <laughs> so we have an app where you can watch all these classes, you can attend them, and it's very affordable. I think it's under $30 a month, and you can attend these classes live, and you can talk to us and send us questions, and, um, and you can watch all the classes. They're all there, so you can, maybe you like a bang, and you didn't really get it the first time. You can stop, rewind it, and watch it again. And so um, it's a really great tool, and that's who's here watching us today are the people that are on that app. Um, and so we want to get to know the people that are here in the studio because for all of you, you know that you could come here and take hands on and get close up and personal coaching and it's really the best. I think watching is one thing and then doing mm -hmm. is like a whole nother thing, yeah. right? Because you see it and you're like, I can do that. That looks easy. Yeah. And then you go to do it and you're like, wait, what was, what, how was that? I don't yeah. really remember. So you have us there showing you how to stand and comb and hold your razor and all of those things. 
Yeah, because the razor really is like, it's different than a scissor where it really is just kind of a feel, you know, and it's like really visual. It's really like, you know, training your eye to kind of, you know, to see what, what's there. It's like, does that look good? If it does, then great. If not, then pick it up, pick it up, cut it off it around, more. Pick yeah. it out. You know, where scissor is so just technical and then it just kind of, it's like very cookie cutter, which is fun. Like, yeah. I love to do that, but I love the razor because I feel like that's kind of like how I like to work and the art I do, I just feel it's very really visual and fluid and touching things and textures and stuff. Um, yeah. So for me, I've always enjoyed that. Me too. But it's also hard, you know, because you want to fix things all the time. Yeah, you know, it's hard to go from like that scissor technique. When I came from like, that Vidal Sassoon, it was yeah. always like, oh, I have to get that little piece. And then sometimes yeah. you're like, oh, that little soft, weird, wispy thing just makes sense and it's cool. You know? And it makes it different and yeah. unique and beautiful. Um, so, yeah, I think also we do understand that you can take the, ra the scissor and do all kinds of stuff with it, right? Like you can break up hair and everything. But I prefer the razor to do that because it just feels faster, smoother. It's just one blade rather than mm -hmm. two blades. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why tension comes in. We're going to talk about all those things. and techniques mm -hmm. and um, you know we'll always go back to the basics even though this is an advanced class it's so important to to um, you know really remember mm -hmm. the foundation right and I think it's also it kind of just brings it back to basics like where I think sometimes we get so in our head about cutting hair and doing our work and creating the most you know unique and seen before hairstyle mm -hmm. that you just forget like it can be also very simple and beautiful and just you know um simplicity yeah like yeah. even with Karina's hair today we just took the back off and graduated and it's like a whole new shape than what she had earlier and it still feels cool and fresh and modern you know to me yeah but so it's, it's like it's the classics it's still right a the classic classics will never die still blow it out and it's just like a simple little cute graduated bob yeah um, so let's start with hearing you guys. So yeah. I want to hear your name, what salon you uh, are in, and what city it's in, and your uh, razor experience. Yes? So can we start over here with you? Yes. Do I know you? Yes, you do. Wait, take your mask off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I was like, I know those eyes. Wait, have you been here That's before? So yes, I remember. <laughs> Speaking of architects and heroes. Oh, yeah. oh. She's from Architects in here. I was like, I know this girl. Who is it? That's so weird. I know. Okay. So good to see you. I feel like I'm going to cry. I know. Oh, I know. I'm like emotional. Oh my um, gosh. So I met Travis. We trained together, we trained together at Architects and Heroes. Wow. Yeah. And actually, um, then I ended up working in Oakland, and then you came to um, a salon that we got invited to, and I was like, oh, you work with Travis. And you're like, I love Travis. And I, was like, <laughs> I know. And then I came and I took a color class with Aura. Here. Oh, cool. Yeah. Who I work so, with. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Eons ago, yeah. we trained at Architects and Heroes, and we had to do all of the model hunting. Oh, and model that's why you're Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so you, like we you were just like, hi, so how are you today? You know, so they're kind of, yeah. why are you looking at me? But they're then, like, I don't want to buy anything. We yeah, got good yeah, at I sales. Like, <laughs> I was just always in Urban Outfitters, like stocking Oh, people. yeah. Right down there, <laughs> downtown San Francisco. Yes. Everybody in Urban Outfitters. Everybody worked there. Urban Outfitters. Such Forever a cool 21. Line. Everyone's yeah. so cool, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Yes. But um, Travis and I, when we were um, sitting there watching haircuts and studying one yeah. day, I remember we had this conversation where we were like, we just got to get out of here and go to New York City and work on Fashion Week and do Bumble uh. and Bumble. And then, um, he did. And I remember like we graduated and left and had our hair shows and I yeah. went and lived somewhere internationally and I came back and I was in New York City and I was like, oh, I want to go to Bumble and Bumble. This is where I would have been if I didn't go international. And there was Travis. And I was yeah. like, oh my God. Uh, and then I, I still remember you did the Moby song in your show. Yes. The Moby song? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know why I remember that. It was a good show though. That's why. And I loved that oh, song. You. It was really pretty. <laughs> anyway, so I, um, I worked in Oakland, and then the salon closed down that I was working in um, uh -huh. on Grand Avenue. And so then I opened my own salon in my backyard. So oh. it's kind of like in Great. the brush. It's like mm -hmm. the brush salon. <laughs> so I, um, I'm here because I want to, I was, I was so excited you were teaching this. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to see Travis. That's but so also cool. just I want to get more tight with my razor work. And I feel like I'm... Uh, missing the inspiration working by myself out in the brush. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to be around artists again and just be yeah. around people that are doing inspira inspiring work. So it's fun. Jenny. Yeah. Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> um, my name's Allie. I'm from Eugene, Oregon. Oh my god, I know you too. No. <laughs> <laughs> We went to preschool together. <laughs> we did. <laughs> um, I work at a salon called Hair Column. I've been razor cutting for um, a few years with the straight razor. Cool. Been a stylist for 12. Awesome. Hey, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. I'm up here from Portland, Oregon. I own Love Salon. Um, mm -hmm. I have been cutting with a razor, with a feather razor my whole career, which is almost 20 years, but a nice. straight razor for about five years. Yeah. Um, Karina taught me a lot of what I know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just really excited to be here and get a get some new tricks. Yeah, awesome. Katie comes pretty often, like once a year at least. So it's yeah, it's really yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Issa. Um, I work at Red Stella Salon in Austin, Texas. Awesome. I love Austin. What's it called? Uh, Red Stella Salon. Okay. Red Stella. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I've been doing hair for about three years, mm -hmm. and when I started, one of my main educators, like, mainly cut with the razor, mm -hmm. um, but, so, like, I kind of kept up with it for, like, a year-ish, and then I kind of leaned into, like, using my shears more, I would yeah. say. Yeah. So, Go back to what feels comfortable. Yeah, so I'm kind of just needing that, like, yeah. new education yeah. with the razor. Re-inspiration, yes. yes. Hi, <laughs> my name is Zoe. I'm from Red Stella Salon also. Mm -hmm. um, I've been cutting with a razor for two years, started with my feather, and then using a straight blade for about the last year. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, I, Travis and I have been collecting some inspiration, and we'd like to start our classes with just some, uh, you know, eye candy, something mm -hmm. to look at, something to, something to think about, and... When you guys are watching this, I just want you to look at suitability. You know, like why does that mm -hmm. haircut work on that person? What's great about it? And what feels unique or, you know, that sort of thing. So we're gonna play that now and then we'll get into our demos, okay? These lights? Or at least one of them. What do you guys think? Anything stand out? I yeah. know. Oh, I love that haircut. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was cute back then. Now it's kind of. <laughs> yeah. We won't get into that. Today. We won't get into that. <laughs> I really feel that Johnny Depp. <laughs> yes. Well, I'd I'm going to start today. Um, my <clears> model <throat> is Christina. Come on up. All right. Cool. Are there things that? Um, you feel inspired by right now? I mean, it's like the world is sort of like all over the place. And sometimes I feel like it's a, it's like creativity kind of is at its high because it's like, we're all like so emotional. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys feel, go over here? Oh. Um, do you, are there certain eras or anything that you feel inspired by? Yeah? 90s. 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 Yeah, 90s is a good one. We reference, I feel like I, in New York, that's everyone's like 90s out. Yeah. Totally. Sometimes it feels like San Francisco in the 90s. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Like in the Lower East Side, you're like, this is really weird. Like, <laughs> I'm like time doing more. the same look. You're like, oh, I'm too old for this. I don't know. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> anyway. um, yeah, I feel like you're right. It's like the Renaissance is kind of happening yeah. right now. Um, with Christina, um, Christina's new to the Bay Area, and um, you know she came in with day two hair, and uh, she heard about us. She said she was looking at salons and just noticed she was seeing a lot of just long hair curled with the curling iron looks, and she just didn't feel like that was her. And so she found Pony, and so this is her first time getting a haircut here. Um, you know, she's nervous, <laughs> talking about like how her curls shrink when you cut them, and and I'm like, yes, I've been cutting curls for 22 years. That's definitely I have curls. You know, my bangs will jump up to here if you cut them right at the same length that you want them to be at. So that's something really important to think about when you're cutting curls. Um, her curls are kind of loose. Uh, they're beautiful. Very fine hair. Each individual strand is skinny. Um, it's shiny and healthy. You can see the difference in the hairline, how it gets a lot finer, and even some shorter bits in here. Um, you can see how the ends are ready, right? They, they probably are, have been around for a bit. So we're going to change it up a bit for her today. The length, overall length, I'm thinking is going to be right around here. So just, you know, sort of right in this area here. And if you could picture that, it already looks so much thicker just holding it up like this. And um, then we're going, see her profile right now? It's just very flat. So what I'd like to do is just create a lot more layer in here so we get fullness in here. And then this is going to be a little smaller, yeah? And then in the sides, in the frame, when I was looking at her, she said she cut a couple little guys in there because she was like curious, you know? <laughs> You know, and you're cur you don't want to cut too many, right? You're like, let me see what one will do. So she did that, and we were kind of taking out these little pieces around her face. And I kind of like that they're not all short. And one of the things that's her concern, which I don't, I don't really think, but everyone has their things, you know? <laughs> so she's like, my face is round, and it's only getting rounder. So I just don't want it to be more round or accentuated that way. So one of the ways that I address that concern is that I don't want to like take everything short, right? So I think a little bit of a triangular shape helps to elongate, right? So that's why I like what's going on over here. Oop, it's hard to look in there. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that here, you know, and then we're just going to create softness around her face. So when she wears her hair up, all these little pieces will just fall out. Her hair is going to be uh, still long enough where she can wear it up. So I want to start with that frame, and then we're going to go into bringing up the length. So the length, overall length is going to be... I'm going to cut off about three inches, and I know it's going to jump up, right? So when I think about, we're changing your, your length, it's going to be past shoulders, I want to make sure that it doesn't end up like up here. Whoopsies, sorry. It'll be there in three months. <laughs> so... So what I do is I measure where I'm going while it's dry and curly, and then I pull on it. And then I know, like, okay, if, even if I pull on it, I probably go a little longer than that, right? Because as soon as you take a little weight off of a curl, it jumps up more than you think. So as far as length goes, we're going to cut it probably to here. And then I just take a look, and I just take a mental note. Like, that looks like a little over three inches, right? So then I remember when I bring it back here, and then I still look at it here, right? Because sometimes there's longer bits past the hairline bits. So I know that I can take that. And so it's just me making a mental note so when she goes and gets washed and wet down, I don't forget what I'm cutting off. And this is stretched out and straight. Well, because when it's wet, it looks straight. So I'm going to be cutting to there, a little past my guide. So I want to be here. This is my target length. So I'm going to cut here. Yes? Target length. I'm going to cut here. Hmm? Okay. I, I have to do that. That's literally me doing what I need to do for, for myself. So that's why I'm saying it over and over again, because that's how I need to remember. I need to really lock it in my brain. 
because I'm an airhead sometimes. <laughs> I forget. Okay, so um, she's like, great. <laughs> All right, so it's going to basically be like kind of like a long bob, but with just layers. Right? And then this is all going to be layered as well, but it's going to have that cute little frame that's disconnected from everything. Cool? All right, so um, this is day two hair. We're actually, should I wash it or just wet it down? What do you guys think? What do you think? Is it better washed? Um, or yeah. do you like this like when it gets a little dirtier? I would, dirtier is always better. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say probably after the cut, it's going to be a little bit out of control and Looking well, we're going to wet it down yeah. totally, and we probably will use a conditioner, but I don't mm. know if we should use a shampoo. Yeah, I'm barely okay. use shampoo. All right, so like we're a just... A suggestion of shampoo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're, we want it to stay kind of like this, this you know, dirtier right. look. So we're going to just um, wet, rinse it down. Um, and the density of her hair, I want to talk about the density. It's actually not... It's, I would consider this medium density. It's not really like sparse and it's not super dense and it looks like, you know, I won't be taking out tons of bulk. It will be more about just lightening up everything, you know, because she's got a good amount of hair. Even when you come around here, it's like lots of hair right here. Pretty dense right there. And then when you get around the hairline, it gets skinny. But that's what we're working with and um, we're going to rinse her down right now. You can go with Eric. And as far as products, I think I'm going to be using a little mannequin at the roots when it's wet so that as it starts to dry, mannequin kind of turns into, I don't know if you remember BB texture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's kind of like BB texture, but it's a little softer. Softer. Yeah, but it still gives it that like, almost like paste. And so when you do this, yeah, it's kind of satiny. And then whenever you, you mess with it, after you, it dries, it just gets full oh, and it just yeah. expands and gets big. So I really love this product for that. So we're gonna use that at the roots. And then I have the Curl Revive, which is one of my favorite curl products because it's almost like water. It just um, hydrates the hair, makes it really shiny. It's still bouncy and beautiful and you can never overuse it. So we're gonna use this today for the ends. And then I might just add a little salt, salt spray, sea salt spray by Mr. Smith. I like this one, it's really strong. So I try to not use too much, and I'll probably just use that all around the whole top in, in the bangs. Yeah. So we get a little more, you know, action, and it's not too silky, especially because it's going to be dirty. So it's on day two, her hair seems to get a little bit more like, it's not necessarily feels like salt spray, it feels more soft. Yeah. And almost like a yeah. little oily. Right? I feel like so her hair could probably get really big too if you, if you wanted so. it to have yeah. a lot of volume. Because it's really light. She seems like she has that curl that's really going to come out with the cut. Yeah, and she said she just started re recently wearing it more curly, and so she, she, it's kind of new to her. Yeah. So she's excited to be here because she saw that we work with natural texture. Yeah. And, yeah. I love that. I love converting clients into their curls, and because a lot of my clients will come in and they just hate their texture. I'm like, you have such good hair. Like, mm -hmm. why are you torturing yourself? Mm -hmm. And. I think you just have to do these like little baby steps with them and, and really it is like that first step. A lot of times, unfortunately, it is just finding the right product, Yeah. you know, that's going to work and it's not every product isn't going to work with that curl or your curl or your, you know, and I think mm -hmm. that's a good step and just like putting a little effort, you know, into that. But I just I see my clients just torturing themselves with the blowouts and they can't really blow out their hair. I'm like, just don't blow out your hair. It's so mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Or blow out the front, you know. I like to tell them to like wash it at night and then when it's still a little damp, just sleep on it. Yeah. And it's That's usually good... the best because it clumps up and it doesn't like, yeah. it doesn't go, you know, it just kind of clumps up against the pillow. Yeah. And um, a lot of times when my clients come in, they're like, oh, I just slept on it and I love it. I'm like, what yeah. did you do to your hair? Oh, I just slept on it. And that's where I get that from. It's yeah. like, oh, that looks good. I, don't, I feel, feel like I know. people should I, do that. I just feel like... We're so, so into like wash and go, but I yeah. feel like working with a natural texture for me just feels like that's just, that's what makes hair look modern to me. You know, it's just, you know, and you can finesse it and do your thing, but it's like, even when I do the shows, sometimes it's like the girls come in and they're just like, don't touch the hair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, just leave it like that. Or, 
just touch it up a little with a curling iron, but like mix it in there. And it's just, just makes your life so much easier. And it's just like, cause even if you have a shag and then you blow it out, it's like, oh, I don't really like it now. No, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? like, I liked it before. Yeah. Even sometimes a bob, like I'll cut and blow it out. And then the next day, like our receptionist, she came in, I'm like, oh, I like it so much better with just the imperfections and how She slept on it? Yeah. yeah. So um, sleep on your blow dry. Or sometimes I'll just mist my blow dry with a little yeah, water, like oh, like it out a little bit, like they're walking through a mist cloud, you know. And then you know how sometimes when, especially you, because you have sometimes when you walk through the mist, you're like, wow, my hair looks so good. Yeah, you have good hair. <laughs> or like you stand in the shower but don't put your head under. Like there's like there's little tricks that you know where your hair just comes out so good, and usually it's less. Yeah. Like less is more. So when you were watching that video of hair, did you notice how everyone kind of had something really unique and just their own? Some characters. Yeah. Um, that's what I love about the 80s is like it really was a very creative and expressive time, you know, and it was, you know, politics were, it's kind of, it's kind of weird and conservative and gross, and, but it, it's also something really great came out of that. And I, I think that's, when it's kind of our time to shine and show people what's really like happening. And I think hair is just the perfect way to open people up and change their attitude and like, you know, get them out of a de funk and a depression and, you know, just having, having fun. Sometimes you just need to have fun and feel good about yourself, feel pretty and feel cute. <laughs> my sister always used to cut my hair. It just feels good. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes too just making what they have just a little better, you know, it doesn't always have to be makeover madness. Because <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. everything's been done, you know, it's just, Yeah. I mean, I can't think of one, you know, actually Ramona did something that I, I thought was, she's so, she's so smart. She did yeah. the, um, what's that haircut? The Isadora? No, which one? She did the, what did she, the jellyfish. Oh yeah, the jellyfish. Which I don't know if, yeah, it was just cool. Kind of like, wow, like a mullet, she, you know? come up with that? You know, how it's she like an extreme it? mullet or like yeah. a bi-level, you it know? It was cool though. Yeah. I do remember in eighth grade, a lot of people having a bi-level. Yeah, bi-level, yeah. yeah. But the way her approach just made it. Was, it yeah, it was, it was totally. Like kind of cut in and then came out. Come yeah, she got, basically did like, like round graduation and just left the back out and didn't even touch the back at all. It was really cool. So it was like a... You can find that video on Yeah. There. It's a good one. So it was like it from the top of the of ear to hands. the top of the ear and just section that away and don't layer nothing. This is just like long hair. I kind of want to do a version of that on that. Yeah, course. and then this was all just like a little graduated shape and all this was left long. You know, it was, it was really cool. cool. Was really the underbit yeah. The underbit? Kind of shape be like... Mid. Like what's below the ears? It was one length. That's it. That's it. There was no layer. No, she didn't even touch it. It was but just it like one length. But it did kind of come in where the layers. It were. did because yeah. she graduated yeah. this, so this came out like that. But this, this nothing. It was cool. There was no connection at all. It was really cool. That's what I loved about it. Yeah, it was Because when so you try cool. to connect it and everything, then it turns into something like yeah. different, you know? Yeah. This, that was, I was really inspired. I cut wigs like that and like curled them and did weird things. Could be very like um, what? What were they? What was it? Hip hop girl group. The S is for super MC Light. M no, oh. but it was like that bi level. You know, like uh, you could salt, salt and pepper. Yeah. Salt and pepper. Yeah. yeah. And when she like, like she kind of who was it? it was salt and pepper. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's also that was a but mistake. MC she like too. she had her hair relaxed <laughs> and the one whole side broke off and she had a hole so like though. where her hair was gone. So they that wasn't supposed to happen. Kind of and so she like used a marker <laughs> on her scalp before she went on stage to like color in her skin. Oh, and cool. then everybody was like that haircut's so cool and it became this rage. Of, but it was a mistake. It looks so and good. They're like, so and this is my party. Came fashion. So my parting is very like a river, right? Like a natural river, not a man-made river. <laughs> so it's got like just that, you know, I just went with like how her hair is falling. So I'll do the same over here. And you guys can see, I'm just like moving the hair around. And you know, also you gotta let it be free because if it's too wet, it won't have any, you won't be able to see characteristics or growth patterns as well. So I'm just kind of moving stuff around and Right? Look at that guy. Oh. <laughs> Let's add more there. I'll just add a little more. It's very calm, Dalibur. It's got 
Yeah. Tom Gallagher used to tell me to bring in models. He's like, just bring in a model and I'll work with you. Yeah, that would be. Uh, I want to get Tom over here. Oh yeah, you have to. You're gonna get Tom here. I want to go for that. Does anyone know about Tom or know him or yeah. any? Yeah, <laughs> he's just very creative, very creative, yes. and he's unique. And the way he cuts hair and his approach and weight removal and everything he does is just so, yes, so good. <laughs> he's cut my hair before, so here I don't want to take as much. I want to keep a little bit of that away. So I'm just gonna do a little like '90s zigzag. <laughs> baby one, a baby zigzag, and get rid of some of that hair so it's not, you know, as thick there. But this is the frame that I'm gonna start with. Karina, Christina's giving me very Linda Ronstadt vibes. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah. 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 the whole time that she was consulting up here with you, I was like, that's all I could see was Linda Ronstadt, yeah. That's hilarious. So I'm gonna take like a little mini triangle here. I totally see Linda Ronstadt too. Now that you said it, we have Maggie Gyllenhaal and Linda Ronstadt in the house today. Her documentary is sad. It's so sad. She can't sing anymore. Linda Ronstadt's documentary is sad because <laughs> she can't sing anymore. All right, so I'm just going to keep this vibe, but I'm going to do like a little opening in the center. So I'm placing my blade straight in. There's something, this is really good technique, is when you put your blade straight in and you tilt your blade at a 45 degree angle. So straight in, tilt. Do, 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 do. And then when you come the other way, straight in, tilt. Do, 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 do. Yes? Kind of like, we used to always say it was like turning a key. Yeah, so it's like you put the key in, you turn it just a little bit. So it's like left to right, I'm gonna be using the tip, and right to left, I'm gonna be using the heel. So just like a little opening there. And the opening helps to create softness at the end. So just still kind of keeping it long. And then in here, so you'll see the hair start to separate for you. So I'm gonna let it separate. Did you see that? So it just opens up right here. So I'm gonna, oops, this guy's trying to get in. So this is gonna be my next section. And I'm gonna oh, hold it high so I can get lots of softness. And I'm just gonna use one of these guides. So you can see through it, you can see the, the length below it. I'm gonna hold it up and I'm just gonna start here. And I'm gonna use a bigger stroke. Do you see that? So it's just creating, right? And you did the elevation higher. So that when it falls, it's just a lot softer. Yeah. yeah. So you can see this strong sort of angle. Here, over here, same thing. I'm looking for where it wants to separate. And then I'll hold it high. And again. Just a bit of a soft stroke. And then on this, on these guys here, I'm gonna do, oh see, he wants to be a part of the bang. I'm gonna cut him up here. So this section here, I'm gonna create a point. So I want it to maybe go, you know, somewhere in there. Maybe shorter. I think I'll go shorter than this section here. And I want it to be real. Why do I want to go shorter? Because I don't want it to be the same length, because then I'll create a bob. You know, like you'll have too much, it's too choppy there. So it either has to be shorter or longer. And shorter, I think, will be cute when she wears her hair up, right? Because it'll be like, you know? I love that. You're like, mm. <laughs> it's like, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna go past her lip, so probably like an inch past, so I'm measuring. And then I'm just gonna start here and create a point. Ooh, I just tapped my skin too hard. So when it curls up, it's definitely gonna curl up. Oh, I need a, I need a um, Band-Aid, please. It's a little one, but. Maybe I won't video that. 
What's that? I said I was going to video you, but I'm like, maybe not. Well, I'll just get a little Band-Aid um, first before we move on. But, yeah. Um, how come you decide to do long Oh yeah, what, why did I pick the stroke size that I picked? Oh, I like the black one. You just have to... It's so long. It just wraps around. It's like a very big band I know, they're nice for hair cutting. And they come in all colors. I like the black. Like neon green and orange. I mean, if you're going to cut yourself, you might as well have a cute band-aid, right? I'm just going to wear it on my nose. <laughs> okay, so... Where was I? The bit. Did someone have a question about the stroke? Okay. So little, little baby strokes are going to create a strong line if you just do a little baby stroke. If you do a bigger stroke, what's that going to look like? It's almost like deep point cutting with your scissor. So you know how, like, I don't know if you guys ever do this or have done this, but when you do a haircut, there was a time when I would do a haircut, blow dry it, and then do a whole nother haircut. You know what I'm talking about? And what was that second haircut all about? It was about getting rid of all the lumps and bumps and weight lines, right? Or softening them. So with the razor, you can just address all of that in your wet cut. So when it's dry, it doesn't really need much, yeah? All right, so here's my little side bit. I'm gonna take a little of this away because I just want it to be really soft. So just past her lip, I'll go here. Ooh, you guys might just want to put on a Band-Aid because I just went and touched the Band-Aid and it was like <laughs> safety. I'll start here because there's a bit of an opening there. Do you see it? So I'm going to start there where the opening is and strengthen it. And then this guy, I'm just going to take him down. Right? So these are going to shrink even more than what you're seeing now. You know, they're going to get. But also, this seems a little thick. So I'm just going to go in and lighten it a little more. Yeah, I like that better. And if you're cutting your hair in the salon. So see you what you got? A little. You're not really like measuring the hair. You're just visually looking at where it falls. Yeah. That's, it's a lot about that. It's a lot about, like, cut what you want to see. Cut it where it lives. Sometimes I go back and I check because I'm OCD. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to take this one down a little bit more. OK, so I want to make sure this one doesn't look too long or too thick, so I'm just looking at it again. It's a little too thick. So I'm going to go in and, again, just take that V a little bit more steep, and then maybe even take a little bit out of the center, OK? now. And so really what I'm looking for is just function. Like, is this functioning? Is it looking cute? Like, after you cut it, you have to display it or like QVC it, how Tom would say, like QVC. This is your new friend. <laughs> right? So a little bit of like these little cute bits are like really great. This is the Curl Revive. Remember I was talking about this? It's like, it's almost like water. It's very hydrating. And then I'm applying it so I can see my finished result and see if I'm ready to move on. Plus I like to kind of style the hair as I go. So when I'm done with the cut, it's pretty much done, right? You could always like blow dry it if your client's like, I'm going on a date and I want to look really like I got my hair done or whatever they want. But I'm just, you know, softening it a bit more. Looking Karina, D and, um, and Jezebel say hi. They're online with us today. Hello. And Jezebel says that um, she still goes in and goes back in and texturizes it and removes weight after her haircut. OK, She's, so let's just look. Yeah, it's like we each have our own personal thing, but uh, we like to finish it. There's no right or wrong. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like this, this is, I just do it while I'm cutting, right? I let the hair dry, I like to start to see what it's doing and what looks good and what needs work. And it looks like your hair is parts off center a little. Yes. 
So I'm gonna let it part off center and I'm just gonna add a couple more pieces on this side because what, when you cut it in center and you part it off center, one side's gonna have a lot of action and one side's gonna be like meh, right? So I'm gonna go over here and add a little more action on the side. Just a little bit, yeah. Just like this guy here. So I'll just elevate again and I'll just add a couple more little pieces. Nothing crazy. Right, so her side part looks cute too. I mean, the this, this, this small side on the side part. The small side needs love too. <laughs> And do you think that, um, I'm gonna soften this oh, a little There's bit. a question. Yeah. Um, can you uh, say again what you're putting on her hair to style it as you're cutting? It's called Curl Revive by Isles Formula. Okay, thank you. So in here, I'm just lightening it up a little more. Just a couple of guys, whatever helps make it feel just even lighter. Also, Jezebel has a question about when do you decide that you're going to use inversions to when you cut the sides to create that softness compared to just cutting a perimeter line? Well, a perimeter line sometimes ends up being too heavy. So if you just cut, sometimes if you have really fine, fine uh, hairline, a really fine hairline, and you cut it, sometimes you do want to cut it really strong, right? Because it's so fine that it's nothing. But if it's too thick, then it ends up just looking like weird, you know, yeah. like a, unless you're doing like a share on purpose, like, uh, like piece, you usually want to soften it. So when you, when the hair is worn up, it just sort of falls out naturally and it doesn't look too, too much, like too much. I'm gonna lighten a little bit more. And just looking at it as it dries, you know, this is just gonna be your personal whatever you see. And this is all kind of like falling in her face, but when we style it, we're gonna push it away a little bit. You know, more natural, like something like that, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go into, I'm just gonna set those bangs really quick and um, maybe a little sea salt spray. Yeah, sometimes you just you can overdo it. And you're just walking around and you just like that hair so haven't gone in the ocean yet, but just so good. All right. Cute, right? Yeah. Even if you just did that yeah, we're done. It's the look. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to start with my length in the back. And I'm going to go higher than her hairline because remember her hairline was shorter. So I'm gonna go just a bit higher and take a bigger section. That's also really fine. And when you're thinking about your sections, I want you to look here more than here, right? Unless it's a little bob, then you gotta do little sections. But if it's long, I want you guys to look at the density where you're cutting, whereas here, as opposed to the density here. And whatever you can control in your hands here is gonna be fine for, for a longer, kind of longer bob. So I'm just gonna get this hair, use my fine teeth, comb it out of the way so I'm nice and neat. Use the ear and a little bit of a twist right there. Now with this bob, 
this long bob, it's gonna be layered. So graduation isn't really a thing. Like I don't mind if it's graduated. Actually, it will look better if it's graduated a little on my uh, length. So I'm not gonna drop each section longer as I'm cutting this. I'm gonna go right to the previous so that there's a little bit of a, a graduation on the bottom. And if you guys have any questions, please ask if you want a little more explanation. All right. Should we sit up tall and come kind of You're fine. You're totally fine. Okay. So I'm cutting right here. This one, this first section is so skinny, so I'm gonna cut it with a small stroke so that I can create a little more strength on my line, okay? I'm gonna lift her up a bit. What are your thoughts like with the, when cutting her texture and the curl and the razor? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of clients that are like, oh no, that will never work. Um, oh yeah. What do you what do you tell them? Or when you're teaching too, and students feel like, oh no, the razor makes it frizzy. Like yeah. do you like a new razor, old razor? Yeah, I think. Or do you cut it a little different than you would um, if somebody had like you know just straighter? thicker hair yeah like maybe for, not so fine for her I think like creating a little bit more strength yeah. on that um, length is gonna be better for her this is gonna jump up to like here you know so just want to make sure that I have weight on these ends and there are some curly people that right. the ends just don't look good with a razor yeah you know so sometimes I just cut that inside yeah with the razor and then I go around all the ends and mm -hmm. do some strength on the ends with the scissor sometimes that works better yeah but you can change up your stroke so for her I'm going to tighten up my stroke so I create some weight so right. there's a little bit of heaviness there I think that's a good point the smaller the stroke the tighter um, the stronger the line the, strong, right? the stronger the line sorry no, that's fine. So when you cut with the heel in here, here you can just cut this way, right? But you can't really cut this way because of the back. So in order for me to get a nice straight line, make sure you're looking straight ahead and not at yourself. <laughs> um, so I want to make sure that my line is straight with my finger first and also that my hand is resting against her back, so then when I go to cut it, I can trust that I have that line. And I usually only do a few strokes, so I can check myself as I go. Especially with the heel, it's harder to go all the way across as it is this way. It's a little easier to keep going. This way, it's like, I, when I'm teaching the students, I'm always like, tap, 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 re-comb, tap, 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 re-comb, instead of like trying to just do the whole thing. All right, so I'm just gonna do the same thing here. I'm measuring first, and then I'm just gonna open the door a little bit, but my hand is still flat against her back. And I love that, that it's, it does look like a stronger line. Like, it almost looks like you went, you know, you did that with a scissor. Yeah, so I'm kind of, the... yeah, I'm using my razor kind of like a scissor in this case. Um, this, the small stroke isn't gonna give you anything that's like, oh wow, that's like a razor cut, right? It just looks like a nice line. Yeah. I remember when I was learning the razor, I went to this road show thing in San Francisco that Bumble was doing, mm -hmm. and I had still been using my guarded razor, and I kinda use it like a potato pillar. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> I still see people do that. I did. I, I was always like, you want a funky cut? Let me get my razor. And then yeah. I'd be like, let me get I didn't even know what I was doing, right? <laughs> so I went to this class, and she was like, go ahead and cut your length. And so I took my razor, and I was like, you know, yeah. and it was like, and I was like, look at my cool line. And she was like, oh, no, 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 I just mean like cut a line. And then she took it, and she went, Brr! and it was like this perfect, no, it wasn't, it was. What, Nikki? I think her name was Maria. And she had like dark skin like me. 
but she used to, she wore this like white island liner under her eye oh, and then cool. brought it out like a cat, but Ooh. only under her eye. Oh, that's cool. I was obsessed with her. She worked at Bumble? Yeah, she worked at Bumble. She mm. was really amazing, but she was gone by the time we got there. Mm. I don't remember people talking about her. Marie? So I need one more line that's <clears throat> strong. That's, I need one more strong line. I feel like. Before, because it's still fine, right? So yeah. I feel like I need one more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comb it. Wait, was I better here? Yeah. 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 So I'm gonna comb it and then I'm gonna let it get a little bit like, you know, wavy. And then I'm gonna measure. And I'm gonna go right to that previous. I don't wanna go past it, okay? My stroke's just a tiny bit bigger now because I have a little more hair to work with. So I can lighten up my stroke a little more. This is how I feel. This is my, my choice. You know, haircuts is a series of choices. And they're your choices, right? So you decide what you like and what you want to do. But I'm explaining my whys, too. Like, this is why, because I feel like I still need a little more strength on this line. Cool? This one I can elevate just a touch because I am already kind of at my, gu I've already created a guide. So I'm using my guide and just bringing it out to me. It's kind of like when you find where you're cutting up here with scissors and then you cut it here, yeah? Okay. I'm loving it so far. I don't know what it's gonna look like, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of this. I do know what it's gonna look like, I'm teasing you. <laughs> She's already scared. I was like, uh-oh, is she a good model? She's scared. <laughs> I don't want any crying. Just kidding. All right, so next section. You can tell that when the front already it just changed, you know. The whole look, it looks so beautiful. It's very like flattering. So you shouldn't be scared. Yeah, it looks good. We're gonna, we're gonna do exactly what we said. Yeah. So I'm going from the That's low right. crown now to the low recession, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way around. And now this is where I'm gonna lighten up everything just a bit. So my stroke's gonna be a little lighter. I'm gonna elevate just a touch. So I'm still cutting my length but I'm kind of switching everything up now. Are you cutting right to the line or past So for the here, line? I think I'm gonna to cut to it, but I'm gonna elevate a little. Okay. So I start to get that graduation and my stroke's even bigger, yeah? So now I have an even bigger stroke. And then when you do that a little and it gives it a little bit of a graduation, it just, just makes it look softer? Yeah, so as I work <clears> up, <throat> now I'm, tr I'm trying to build a little like yeah. graduation there. So. Um, I'm probably going to layer that a little bit, so I'm not worried too much about like getting a really strong line, but also it just helps with the overall perimeter yes. for it to just be softer. Nothing's hanging over or yeah. longer than the previous. So when I get to the side here, I'm just going to bring everything back and keep cutting and then bring this forward and keep cutting. Cool, so there's my length. See, if I cut this any longer than this length that I chose here, it wouldn't be in Bob, about Bob category anymore, right? It would turn into something more just like long layers. But I like that we're switching it to a bit of a Bob with some frame. Do you think past the collarbone is still, would you call that a Bob? You know when there was that lob phase, everyone was like the lob. Yeah, but I think yeah, once it starts to get a little too long, then it's, it's, then not it's a bob, almost right? like you got to. I feel that like off. past the collarbone, it's not a bob, right? Yeah, I but this like is definitely going to shrink. <clears throat> like this is all going to shrink up to this collarbone right here. Okay, so um, you can come over here and cut the other side so that you have balance, or you can just keep cutting on that side and then. Some people prefer to, to go back and forth. So I'm gonna go back and forth. I've got a question for you now. Yeah. 
Um, so Karina, if she had tighter curls, would you end up kind of loosening your, um, your, your uh, technique in the perimeter and then also cut everything more with less graduation because of the bounce that you'll get? If it were tighter, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because you'll just get a graduation anyway, cutting it at one you're length. You're right, so when you cut, if you pull hair down that's curly and you cut it one length, one length, what happens, right, with tension? Yeah. And even with straight hair, you will get that too. Right. But you get it a lot more exaggerated with curls, so that's why I'm holding it so low, because right. I know it's already gonna happen, right? But because her hair is looser, you're gonna do a little graduation, because you still want that, you want more layering in there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna layer this too afterwards. Gotcha. So elevate a little. I always make sure I can see my guide and I'm cutting right to it. If you can't see your guide, you should take a smaller section. Chin up for me. And then just bring this forward. Cool. Mm -hmm. Little baby strokes. Here we go. I'm gonna have now I'm gonna go from high crown to high recession. High crown, high recession. So I'll go from here to here. And this stuff also is gonna be layered. So I'm not, I'm just cutting it off so that I can start to get my visual of my guide but I know I'm gonna recut it anyway, so I'm not stressed about how I cut it, but also I just, I do wanna get a visual of what this bob's mm -hmm. gonna look like. It's all gonna curl up. Once you get that, you know, the front of the ear and behind the ear, once you do that, you don't have to do it again on that second section. And this stuff is short, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, so when you're doing a square, I'm gonna do a square layer back here. So when you're doing a square layer, you wanna think about your perimeter before you get into it. Sometimes with this haircut, you can start here. But if I look at that, I feel like it's too fine and skinny, so I don't wanna layer that okay. too much. Um, so I'm just gonna go from like, it's almost like this, what do you call it, the headphone section? I'm just gonna do like the headphone uh, section. I forgot about headphones. headphones are like still happening, headphone right? Section. Headphone <laughs> section. <laughs> <laughs> kinda. I was kinda like people that. wear cute headphones now, it's like about yeah. style. I feel like it's just another thing and then the yeah. headphone in your bag and looking for other stuff. And... All right, so I'm just gonna start right in the center taking a large section. And why did you choose to do a square layer? Square, because I feel like that'll give her lots of, like a good profile. It'll yeah. keep, you know, this a little smaller and this a little fuller. So I'm gonna go just into that past the O bone, just a little past the O bone, okay? And that's where I'm gonna layer, and it's gonna be square, but it's gonna be square up here, like this. Yeah. So it's gonna be like, yeah? So I'm gonna elevate. There's the O bone right there. Yeah, you guys see that? That's the O bone. That's where I'm gonna start layering. Right there. So that also sinks that in at the bottom, okay? And my next section, I think I could just bring this whole thing back. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna do. I remember do. learning this haircut at Architects and Heroes and I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the one haircut I honestly, I was like, I really fucked that haircut. I was like, remember Alicia? Yeah. 
She was my teacher and she had to come fix that haircut. I was like mortified. Wait, what didn't you do? I just cut it like square, square, and it was square, and it was just like, and like it was crazy. <laughs> well, but that's, like, what, but that's what you do when you learn. You're oh like, I don't want to mess up my corner. Because even with like graduated Bob, you she know? was off or something, but that haircut, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> like when people are like, did you ever mess up a haircut? I'm like, yes, I did. We have a question. Can you I give her really the mic? I really messed that haircut up. I just didn't. I didn't get it. I was like, I'm doing a square, and then it came, I was like. Oh. Okay, what's your question? Um, are you using a stationary guide? Are you over-directing back? Can't quite I'm tell. I'm over-directing back, because <laughs> square, mm -hmm. do you know about cut cutting squares? You, if you follow, mm -hmm. you're gonna round it, right? So you wanna bring everything back to you and create sort of like this, right? So these will be longer than this, yeah? And sometimes when you just cut square layers, that ends up being like a little blocky or a weight line. So we can address that a little later. I think this one, I went a little too high. Yeah, there it is, see? I like that. Would you do the same technique right. if her hair was also, if you're gonna keep it longer? Like a square technique if it was longer hair? Yeah. I haven't ever really done that, but it could yeah. work. Yeah. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna take away the top. I like to do the top last. So I'll, I'll just do this side first. So what I like to do is I like to take a whole section before I go to here, I wanna mm -hmm. see and strengthen my square here. So I'll elevate it and look at it and see, oh look, I can take that off there. So I'm gonna take that off. And then I'm gonna go here and take a section just over the ear. And I'm gonna over direct it back to this one. So I have a new guide and I'm just over directing to it. I don't wanna go like over direct too far back, but you can see what I'm gonna do there. So I'll And then here, I'm gonna get rid of this now and over direct back to here. Can you face her and tell us Sorry, I just cut it before I did that. Okay. So it's gonna give us a nice shape. It's gonna make this, the, the bottom smaller, okay? It's pretty. So it's not just like wide. You can kind of already see what it's doing. Going to this side now. Yeah. Do you mean this? Want longer in the front? So like this section here, I'm bringing it here because I cut it here. So when I bring it here, I'm strengthening strengthening it a bit so that it transitions to the side really well. Because if I don't, I will have a big corner heaviness there. So I'm going here. I think the corner here. Sorry. And this is what I'm strengthening right there. I have to do it this way because I'm cutting upwards. I'm using an upward stroke. So I'll hold it here and cut that. I'm going to look at my line because I feel like I dropped some out. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the ear, everything over the ear, and take this section here and over direct back just a little bit. So I'm still holding this straight out. This section's still gonna be held straight out and I'm pushing this next section to it. And see, you can see your guide really clearly, that's so important. Then I'm gonna take that section away and I'm gonna over direct this back to just that section. So make sure that you're holding it straight out. All right. So now for this here, I'm going to, again, just I did this last time, I'm gonna bias the top 
So bias is also a Sassoon thing, and it's just connecting the top to the sides in a point so that when it falls over, it hugs the head really nicely. So I'm just going to start here, and I'm going to go short to long. Woo! Careful. And then all of this. Take a little bit from the side so you have a guide and cut up to this point. And then the other side, I have to stand in front of her to do. So I'll bring everything over again, short to long. And then over direct this back a little bit. And then whatever falls forward here, there's going to be a little bit of a point. And I do want to go through that point a little bit, so I'll just take out some weight so it's not as heavy. I need to put a little more product in there. Mm -hmm. Disheveled elegance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on the disheveled. Okay, so once you get all your fun. layers in, now then it's just going to be so refining your cut. So I do still need to do a little bias in the back here. So I'm going to take this whole back area here. I'm turn it this way. and check to see what I have here. Oh, I don't really have much, see? It was kind of that length anyway, but I can lighten it. So that's what I'll do here, is just lighten this, up this, this layer. This is good too for like clients that have been growing out like a short bob and they get to that length where they're just like, I don't know, I hate my hair. And then you could do this and it's like a whole new, it's kind of like a uh, yeah. whole new cut. It could be very like, you know, Debbie Harry or Courtney Love 90s, which I love. I love the messy bob. Five minutes. Five minutes. I might go over a little bit, just to warn you. No, oh, really. I'll do my best. <clears throat> so now what I'm doing is what you do with the dry cut, right? You take the weighty parts mm -hmm. and you just lighten them up. And you were also adding product as you went along too, right? Kind of layering yeah. a little, which I, I think is nice. Like you could, you know, just when you're done, just wet it down and bring it all together. Mm-hmm. Like I definitely need this, but I do need I like a little bit one. of water as well. I know it's really good. It's also nice too, like when you see it in person and then when you look in the camera, you know what's happening, you get a different perspective. I always like to take pictures of my work. I mean, it gets annoying posting stuff all the time, but people like it, you know, you kind of have... Um, you, got, you got followers. You get followers and, well, you get clients. You, <laughs> you know, people look clients, and see what followers. kind of, you know, like, oh, this is your vibe, you know? People are waiting to see their hair type, too. Yeah. Like, in your, in your scroll, they're like, well, when's she going to cut someone so like me? keep it very diverse as much as I can. Because you kind of want every, I want everything. I want everybody. I want, I want everyone. I want, I like, want every texture. I want the gray hair. I want... I always think it's weird when people are a special, I specialize in this one thing, because it's never really that special. <laughs> no shade, and respectfully to whoever's a specialist. Respectfully. Respectfully. Huh? 
It's, yeah, like I'm a, I do this one cut, I'm a specialist in this one thing, and then put you in a box, you know? And it's, like I said, it's usually not that special. And what if it's a cut where in two years you're like, and now I have all this, you know. That's all my things. work. That's my body of work. Like, that's it. Yeah. You know? So I think it's good to keep your work very diverse and do long and short and, and just play with everything. But it okay. doesn't mean that you can't have an aesthetic. And I think that's what people yeah, confuse. They're aesthetic, like, my aesthetic is sure. this, but I can cut all these hair, yeah. hair textures. But you know, and there's shapes. some people that are like, oh, I'm a, they're a long hair specialist. Yeah. You're like, oh, but they only do long so layers. I added a little bit of this like, mannequin. Okay. <laughs> that's not special. <laughs> I'm leaving these long. First I'm not going to frame. I'm not going to frame these. Sorry, I'm not being shady, but respectfully. Disres respectfully, disrespectfully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I feel like right now it's still very wet. I'm um, going to apply a little bit of mousse on the ends. Before I do that, I do want to wet it a little more because it's getting fuzzy. Mm, I love that technique, the it's roundabout. Good. I actually mist. got that technique from you know, David Tolls from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does it. And oh, he's I like, like, that. like, it's like you're walking in a cloud. I'm like, oh, I love it. Or if you're in Palm Springs. Because, and sidewalk. also, it's a great, it's also, a, yeah, or the they should have that in Las everywhere. Vegas. That's so genius, you know? So see what just happens when I add a little bit of hold product <laughs> to her like, hair? Just a little bit of hold. <laughs> Do I have that pink brush? It's all right. The other um, I forgot you laugh at my dumb jokes. So sometimes <laughs> I like to take this brush and just brush through the ends, That's and then energy. scrunch them. Take my ends. It looks really good. It's so pretty. I like that brush too. This is it brush like is a... great. It's a curl brush. Oh. Ooh, and then just scrunch, scrunch, crunch. What is it? Put your head back. I love that. A little more, can you? It's really cool. So pretty. Mm, I love that. Come back up. So you can see it gets smaller there and a little fuller there. Nice. And then the bangs. I'm going to let them open up. I'm gonna do one little baby connection here. And that helps the bangs kind of. I think this is one of the things that you were saying, Karina, that you do a lot of your weight removal throughout your whole entire haircut. But you do a lot of like checking throughout. I mean, there's moments where the client's almost ready to leave. You're like, wait, that one little piece. You're, I always find you constantly checking your work. And yeah. as you're styling and you're watching what the hair naturally does, you're addressing it. And it's. Yeah, because you don't really know until it starts to, yeah. um, to dry. And it is like. Especially um, curls. A, a way to develop your eye, too, and see something different. You know, always looking at your work, always shaking it out. And not being afraid of what you, you know, like move it around in five different directions and show your client, like you can wear it here, but you could wear it in the middle or you could wear it on the other side. And just, you know, like it just kind of falls and does its thing. Because people eventually are going to walk outside and the wind's going to blow their hair. So. You know, mm. it's nice to see how it's going to look oh. tossed around, which is always my favorite hair. That's great. Such a nice shape. I feel like there's there's yeah. a little bit of weight here, so I'm just going to lighten that up and then. And I just feel like it's going to grow out nicely, and I think you. The weight removal was really spot on. You didn't. Just right here, it's perfect. definitely got a little too much weight. So I'm going to take <clears> that <throat> out. And then also here, there's just a little too much. So it's right there. 
So Dee was asking about the brush that you're using through the hair, and it's the, a brush that was made by Felicia Leatherwood, and yeah, you can find it online. It. Um, Sold on out right Brush now. with the best. It's, yeah, it's, it sells out great. She really made it for textured hair, and it, so it has a great amount of tension, so it stretches the curls, ribbons them. It doesn't break the hair. It, it's, it's a genius design. Oh, yeah, um, But brushwiththebest.com is where you can find it. And I and can't, like, I keep selling through them here. Like, yeah. they just have sold out. At the other Best. salon, they're gone. Oh, you sell those? Yeah. I went, I bought them because some? I love them. We have them here, but we don't have them at the other salon because we sold out, but we have one here that you can have. Okay, so just like, again, I just need to make sure that it doesn't sit weighty anywhere. And I'm taking out big chunks. It's like the it's like the car parking lot, you know. Like a couple cars leave. <laughs> this car left. That car left. And now two other cars can park in there, right? <laughs> That's Tom Gallagher's thing. We're really channeling Tom today. We are. We love Tom. Because <laughs> he's just so. Tall. He's legendary. And he just says the funniest stuff that. You yeah. Just never forget. He has really cute style. He always dresses like a little boy. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I see like him on the street. Like it reminds you of like AC/DC a little minute, bit. Watching for a minute, walking down the sidewalk. I'm like, does he know where he's going? <laughs> <laughs> or like, what's he thinking right now? What's Tom <laughs> thinking? That could be a show. What's Tom thinking? Yeah, he should have his own show. He really is a genius, though. He just comes up with his own way to talk about hair, and it's. Really, you can understand it. It's just funny. But he's also like five years old sometimes, which is like endearing and like, he's just, he's all of those things. He's all the things. Okay, so now just come forward like this. Uh, I'm almost done, guys, I swear. That's good. What do you, and you're putting that to add moisture? I'm adding wherever it gets like, wherever it's like a little fuzzy and frizzy, yeah. I'm just adding a little product right now. And then again, I love to just keep adding a little water because yeah. it just helps like the round. Yeah, it helps it helps so keep good. it like softer yeah. without being too like crunchy or whatever. Okay. Looking at this is it. It's really pretty. Hey, we're here again. Hello. Um, Hello. I really, I really like how you're kind of a la carte the, um, the products depending on what's needed. Like in the front, mm -hmm. the, the sea salt spray for more volume around the face. And then where it tends to get more frizzy, you put a, a product that would soften the curl. Where you need volume, you put it. So I, I, I really like that you're kind of seeing where on the head what's needed um, and then doing, executing. I also noticed that it's a very alive technique, cutting with the, the razor, that things as they pop in or pop out, you kind of address it mm -hmm. um, versus putting your shape in, drying it, and then being like, oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. So because as it's drying, you can start to see like where it's going to be, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her over there, and we're just going to diffuse it a little bit and give it a little more body, and you guys will see when it's totally dry. Cool. But this is the look. It's great. It's just so like, nice. right now like it, it looks so like, versatile too. yeah, the front's still like kind of long, you know, yeah. like it's, it's just. Like I like how you kind of gave her a little more of a faux bang, but. Not like a full bang. Yeah. But if she wants that look, she has it. And what does it look, if she kind of pulled it back, are the pieces? Oh yeah, like if she Let's pulls it the back. Little, the bits. You know, it just looks really sexy. Karina always does It does bits. look a little more Linda, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love that. See, that's so good. That's so pretty. That's so just like red carpet hair to me. Mm-hmm. Then it really still has pretty. an angle, you know, it's so there's orange. still like, you know, something really pretty about it. Just major. It's just cool. I feel like she looks it cool. It looks so and good and it's so flattering. And I think all the things that like her concern, your concerns, I think Karina was really mindful of that and executed it so well. Oh, you got a hair in your eye. It's beautiful. That length looks really, really nice. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna dry her, but you can go ahead and stand up. 
I like how the color looks darker too. It's richer. Yeah, you can right here, Christina. Just stay here. <laughs> All right, so we'll um, we're gonna take a break. Uh, we're gonna switch educators, and we're ha gonna have a new model where we're cutting a little bit of a shorter haircut. So we're gonna take about two. See you in a bit. We'll be back in two and two. Two and two, right back at you. Who did that, Jenny Jones? Um, wait, can you sit here? I'm gonna diffuse it a little bit. Okay, 
Um, thank you and welcome back. If you didn't get my name, I'm Travis. And I'm gonna do a cute little short haircut on my model, Jamie. So Jamie, please come up. Thank you for watching today. I appreciate everybody who's out there and joining us. So Jamie, um, I already actually like her hair, you know, and they were sending me some pictures of girls <clears throat> and I saw her and I just, I kind of, she was giving me a little of a Maggie Gyllenhaal vibe. And one of my favorite haircuts is her short haircut that she had. I, I feel like it's been a long time right now. And, um, and then I remember her and Kristen, Kristen Dunn's were best friends and then she had the haircut. And it's just a haircut that I like and I still do it a lot. And um, it's basically just, some people call it a pixie. I always reference um, the Chelsea girl, which was always like really short and shaved and then long around the side. So that's a very harsh haircut, but I love, I still love that going from short to long. So that's basically what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start in the back. Um, do you wanna show your um, inspo picture? Oh yeah, I can show the inspo pictures too. I mean, I love, Everything, like as I was playing with it, I really, I love all of this and the perimeter. Um, and I like even this back here. So I'm gonna leave all of that out. And then I'm at the end, I'm visually gonna cut it and kind of see what I wanna do. Cause I don't know, like I even like the idea of this being really short and this long through here. Um, I just felt very inspired by her and her hair and then in person, I got more inspired and I, I was like, can I just play with your makeup and <laughs> give you a smudgy eye even though I don't do makeup? Mm -hmm. And um, I always reference Peter Lindbergh. I love those black and white pictures. I love that smudgy makeup. It's just always, it's always my favorite. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so with that said. I love. Um, oh, Karina, oh yeah. So on my phone, I sent some images. I immediately went to the Maggie picture, and also, of course, Stella Tennant kind of always had these really great cuts. So those were two, and I'm blind. Well, not, I'm not blind, but I have a hard time seeing these days. <laughs> it's a little more difficult. Time has not been kind to my eyesight. Um, God, now, of course, I'm not gonna find them. Oh, I loved that profile shot that you were like, I want her profile to look like this. Um, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Ah. Oh yeah, here's my pictures. I don't know if you can, let's get to the Maggie. You can look back at the TV screen to oh. see if, if it's. Here's the Maggie. Um, there's that one. I just liked that shape. I always love, I feel like it's hard sometimes to talk clients into leaving that out, but if they are into it, I'm always so excited to do that. Cause, and this one is really- So cute. So cute and long. And if you, and then there's the Stella, which I love Stella. Um, we just lost her RIP Stella. Yeah, and this one is so good too. So all of these are kind of in that world. You know, they're like shorter to a little longer. Mm -hmm. And I think with hers, um, I don't know what you guys would call the, you know, some people say it's a pixie. Um, it is, I guess, it could be a pixie depending on how short, but I think for today, it's really just changing those pr proportions. I approach a pixie cut if I'm gonna do really short, pretty much the same way. Um, but with her, I'm gonna start in the back and I'm gonna go pretty short, but I don't wanna go so short that this sticks up and I'm gonna really exaggerate everything. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna see what I have and where I'm at. And then I'm gonna just, you know, I'm definitely gonna bring this up, but I don't wanna take it all away because I feel like there is some good stuff in here. And I definitely don't want it to look like a mullet. Yeah, um, her hair texture changes too. A and little it bit changes. From there to there. And the way I'm gonna do is really just kind of following the head shape. And, and literally, like when I say follow the head shape, it is like, pulling it out to her head shape. Um, when I come down here, I'm even gonna go down, but I'm gonna be mindful of saving that. Cool. But I want this to collapse, and it is gonna kind of do that, and then I'll have room to play, which I always love. Yes. You know, I like to like, 
put in my signature and do all of that stuff at the end. And sometimes I just, even lately with the length, I've just been doing the front, I leave it long. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, you know what, I like it long, let's just trim it, it looks great. Yeah. In fact, I just posted a picture where I thought I was gonna cut my model's hair shorter. And then I really just went through and just nipped a few pieces and it just looked great. Yeah. So I think playing with proportions is always um, a way of kind of, you know, coming up with something new and fresh and just changing a classic cut. And obviously a pixie cut is classic in the world of punk and Riot Girl and all of that, which I think is so kind of relevant right now. I just saw Bikini Kill. Oh, which is like so... <laughs> so fun. So, so good right now. And, you know, just... Um, those are like just those kind of badass girls. Yeah. You know, I think... I think could, Jamie's a badass girl. Yeah, she's a badass girl. Yeah. And she let me do her makeup. <laughs> Say, um, someone sent in a oh, message. Um, it's similar to the Sassoon, the mush. Yeah, I like this one. I don't remember the mush, but thank you for sending that in. Does the anyone what? remember the mush? The mush? I don't remember that one. I don't either. Was it Vidal Sassoon? Wasn't the, Sassoon? the Urban Angel kind of this cut? Yeah, too? I feel like the Urban Angel. And I always loved the Urban Angel, Me but too. no one back then wanted that cut. And like the color. Because <laughs> it was felt so more cool. hairdressery back then. Yeah. I don't know, but I always thought it was cool. It was avant garde. It was avant garde. <laughs> but um, yeah, the Urban Angel, I feel like, actually is kind of happening a lot right now. Yeah, I see People that a lot. Cutting and leaving those little wings on the side. And so I always, too, like I could, you could almost keep this and call it kind of like a short shag. I was doing that for a minute, like a short like shaggy a really cut. Like a really short shag, mini shag. A little shaggy shag. Shaglet. <laughs> Which I think we've all done our fair share of shags. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is the shag uh, Which is, I think you can, say, <laughs> you can say shag now at this point is a classic haircut. Totally I is. Think it's, and it's been around forever and it's yeah. always cool, you know? But I think, you know, you kind of get burned out too. You know, it's just, okay, we did that. And clients get burned out of it too. They're yeah. like, can you cut off my shag? Right, like I'm done you know, with like this. on Instagram, you're like, how many more shag haircuts am I gonna post? But they're fun I still do them and I still love them. Cause there's so many different ways to do them and also different results. So yeah. like, depends on the person sitting in your chair. And that's what we're all about here is really studying the person that's in your chair and noticing their hairline and noticing the differences about them. And, um, you know, it's not about inventing a new haircut, but more about mastering what you're currently doing and being able to change it to suit the individual that you're working on. And I think, honestly, like, haircuts that are classic are classic for a reason because Bob's, look good on most people or, mm -hmm. you know, graduated yeah. Bob, maybe not for Bob's everybody. Bob's good on two-year-olds versions of graduation. everything in between. You know. Bob's look good on men, on, you know, non-binary, everyone. It's just such a great haircut that will never, ever go away. I like to, you know, I feel like doing, being a hairstylist now is nice because it's not so limited, you know, like haircuts that I give boys, I give girls and vice versa. And it's just, there's no, there's no rules anymore, which I think is really nice. People are kind of over that. And I don't hear as much anymore, like my boyfriend or my husband likes my hair long, so mm -hmm. I can't cut it. Mm -hmm. And usually those clients for me don't, I'm always like, no, that's not, I'm not, it's not my thing, you know? Um, so they, they either, their husbands hate me or they just don't come back. I mean, I like long hair too, but I feel like when people say that, that kind of means that secretly they really want to cut all their fucking hair off and have a pixie cut. Yeah. So I'm like, if you want that, are you really gonna, you know, do you, like, who cares? You're pretty, have, you know, do what you want to do. And it grows out. And, and short hair is pretty, you know, it's just sort of, when people are like, oh, well, it's not as da 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 da, it's like, yes, it is. Sometimes oh, it's yeah, like it's not feminine enough or it's not really my style. It, and short hair can be. And long so hair is things. great and beautiful, and I, I love cutting long hair. So I'm kind of doing this V. But I think there's great examples of that. I mean, I think Halle Berry is, looks more feminine 
She yeah, looks so, so much, much more striking better. with short hair than she I long hair's pretty on her. But she's striking when she has short hair. Like it's She kind of blends in with the longer hair, right? She does. Yeah. yeah. She, she gets in. a little more basic. Yeah. I mean, she's obviously stunning, but with the short hair, it just brings out the features, her eyes. It's like it makes you want to have short hair when you see Halle Berry. And for Berry. me, I feel like Maggie always looks great with like that length, a bob, short cut. I always think she looks like it would be weird to see her with long hair. And so when Travis saw Jamie, he immediately thought of Maggie Gyllenhaal. And um, Jamie's gotten that before. Ja I, ja Jamie's been a model with us since 2014. So she's, she, we've seen her in all kinds of haircuts. So she's really versatile. She has a lot of hair. <laughs> she's very versatile. She's very versatile. She's like a chameleon. <laughs> and one of the things that um, we talked about was, you know, let's give her something Maggie Gyllenhaal inspired. And so we got into all these photos and we went down this rabbit hole. And it's like, it's so fun to um, get a reference for what you're going to do and look at a picture first before you do it because it helps, it almost helps you study a little bit more, you know? Also, too, I didn't get into the density of her hair because I got so in, into the references. Um, I feel like she has a, a medium wave that I think would really like benefit from this cut um, and also easy to kind of smooth out if she needed to. But I would always encourage her natural texture. You know, her hairline down here is really nice. So there's nothing that I'm really like, you know, I, you do want to check all that stuff out before you start just cutting. She does have this little jump right here. So I would want to be careful if I was really trying to do something down the center, like shorter, because it really just wants to kind of fall in there. It's pretty strong, huh? Yeah, but she has a medium, you know, medium texture hair, but there's a, a lot, you know, it's pretty beefy around here where most people have a lot of hair. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's interesting because her hair actually gets really thick on the sides, mm -hmm. which I find, you know, um, people's hair usually gets finer through here and hers is just, she has a lot of hair. She's a great hair model. <laughs> She's kind of the perfect model. I'm going to just section out this top section and then play with that. Do you want a clip? Or something? Um, no, I don't clips? need a clip. Okay. Maybe, what is that? Do you have any clips out here? No, I'm fine. I think she'll be fine. Okay. Let's do old school. We don't use clips. Thing. A little swirly world. And then I, um, I always like to tell people like if my razor's new or old. Um, in the salon, I don't stress about it as much, but I always feel when I'm doing a model, I like a fresh blade when I start, especially with her hair, but I am mindful of how aggressive I am because when it's new, obviously you can really like, you know, do some damage. Um, and I'm gonna take that. So I did start with a fresh blade and I, I remember I had a, um, someone I assisted was always, or she taught me, and she would always be very a stickler about like changing your blade throughout the haircut. I don't, I'm not such a stickler on that. Yeah. Um, you don't mind when it gets a little more dull? No, and like, or if it got too dull and I just felt like it's not right, I will change the blade. I don't know, people, old school bumble people might not agree with that. But also I think it, it depends on the hair type. Yeah. Because like if you're cutting really fine like cat fur hair, you can use yeah. a dull blade. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Yeah. But if you're, you're cutting hair more like mine where each individual strand is really thick, yeah. you kind of want a sharper blade. Yeah. You also want the hair to be more wet, you know, so it's like it's going to vary uh, based on hair type. As so, well. um... Is this the right angle? It's a little more towards Karina. More towards Karina? Okay. So I'm just going to do my first section straight down. And again, I'm just really following head shape. Um, and um, again, some people, when I'm teaching, everybody has like different schools of like how much hair, you know, 
really small sections or a large section. I feel like with the razor, it's just what feels comfortable in your hand. Like, I like kind of doing, I, this just feels right. That looks good. And this is my first section. I'm gonna do a little bend because I don't wanna oh, cut beautiful. too much weight out through here and that's when it gets like all Is Debbie fit. watching? So Hi, I'm gonna Debbie. bend that and not go Can through Can we here. show what Debbie sent? So Debbie sent this mush. Is this the mush? This might be the mush. Oh yeah, like yeah. that's such a great, oh, mush I have to remember mush. that. So we're doing the mush. The mush. Smush, mush. That's what my friend calls me. Hi, smush, mush. That's a great, <laughs> that's a really good reference. So I'm taking the oh, weight thank out. Thank you, Debbie. First, I'm being very aggressive. Um, I'm not gonna take as much down here because like I said before, I'm gonna play with that. And then... Weight I'm removal gonna, is so important. Weight, re weight removal is so important. It's so important. Because yeah. even just that, you can see how it just opened and changed everything, just taking weight out and no length. Yeah. So with what I'm gonna do, instead of taking short and just cutting the line, I'm going to kind of like cut from the inside out. So I'm gonna start here. Like that. Ooh, I, I like. Out. Yeah, so sometimes maybe a client comes into you and all they need is weight removal. Yeah. So you can do a whole haircut with just weight removal. And the reason I'm doing this is just, it's a little more freehand and it just gives it more variation, it's especially as it so grows cool. out. Then I'm still being mindful, like when I pull this section out, I'm not pulling it up, I'm still doing head shape. Through here, I'm gonna take that beefy part and then I'm gonna leave that long. So see, all that's in there. And now I have this to play with. And I might go through here and cut that shorter. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm gonna leave that a little bit. But see how this is where her head is coming straight out. It's not like that, it's like that. Because what happens if you bring it up to you? It ends up getting too long, right? It doesn't so even hug like that. Head. You know, you could kind of imagine if you were trying to do a certain look. That's really kind of cool and pretty. It's kind of like a little uh, jellyfishy. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, yeah. You can already see that hugging the head and really. And I really like this length through here. So good. At the end with my signature, I might go through and do a little tweaky tweak. So I'm gonna take some weight out. Some cars out of the parking yeah. lot. Big cars. And I did play it safe, um, you know, checking up here, but down here, I feel confident that these hairs aren't gonna poke out. Yeah. And then I just go through here. Straight out. Her hair would be really fun to um, finger wave. So I'm really just like, I feel like this, I'm literally just kind of sculpting it to her head, which is, it's sort of fun, you know? You're just like really, it is technical, but it's also, you know, you're just molding it. Cause I already know the cut, I know how I want it to look. So this for me just feels fun. It looks fun, and it's I'm, inspiring. And I'm really just using this piece as my reference point for the whole cut. So I use that if I'm, and then I, come around and I follow, and I'm just following head shape, like that. There's that part. You know, I kind of just grab that again, do, do, do. And I can change, you know, just because I went from inside out up, it doesn't mean I have to do that every single time. Like I, I can, I can do whatever I want. Like we can do, we can cut it however we want to cut it. I love it. I love how you're coming from the top and the underneath. You know, because I want it short, but I also envision this cut as it gets long. And I really love that. Like sometimes when they come back and I'm so just good. like, oh, I just want to do a little tweaking and you're fine. Yeah. Um, 
This is one of my favorite cuts. I feel like I've probably done versions of this a lot at Pony, but. I do, I do a similar thing, but I really like the difference in the way that you're doing it and making it a little more, each cut that you're doing is so thought out. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not going to leave all of that But You're just going to play with that, around play. with that, yeah. I'm going to play with that. So pie and sections. And see how I'm, I'm definitely doing like pie sections, um, but I'm going to go f start going more that, like that. Kind of pivoting around the head shape. Pivoting around. It's really, I... Let me turn a couple steps here, right? Yeah. Um, And you can always look More? there, Let's Travis, see. and see like mm -hmm. what can people you see are seeing. Is that weird? Can you see it? Oh. Yeah, so they can look on the screen whenever. Yeah. So this is good? No. Okay. That's great. So now, and even just because that was my guide, I can do this top piece. Again, it doesn't have to all be right there. Like all the varying lengths you know, are helping But it. that's just a reference through here. You know, but there's that little bit and let's take that off. Um, it's always pretty beefy around here. Is that right behind the ear? This is right behind the ear. And this one I'm gonna just leave out. Cause I don't know, I, I'm, I'm kind of having a vision of it being some, I don't know. Okay. I don't know, it's starting to come to me. <laughs> <laughs> the, pixie, the pixie gods are coming and <laughs> saying leave that. There is, like I said, you know, I, I sort of see this thing happening. It's so cute. You know, so it's like, let's just say that. Where before, you know, I used to be like, oh God, that's disconnect, and then you're stressing and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. well. But as you get older and you get there's more experience, you more done, confident yeah. with your techniques, you can just just feel it out. And that's why I love the razor. Because once you practice the bob and the graduated bob and you know all that and and sometimes it's just an angle of holding the razor. Um, sometimes, you know, when you first learn, we're always just like, don't ever cut with a flat. And then you see us in a vac in an advanced technique class, and we're just cutting with the flat, you know, because sometimes that just that just works. Like down here, I would totally just go like like that works really well. But you also have to know what you're doing, and I feel pretty confident that. Does everyone feel comfortable with the difference between the flat and the edge of the blade? How about for you guys? Comfortable with that? So like if I was gonna do the flat, let's do one like this. Um, you know, that's more the flat. It's just gonna give it softer and more diffused. And then this would be more the edge. So think about if you, your arm is the strand of hair and your blade is flat against it, you're not gonna cut through it, right? But as soon as you put it on the edge, so that's the same with hair. So here I'm just kind of freehanding that part. Because like I said, I really want it to kind of have that more of a Chelsea curl, uh, Chelsea, what is it called? The Chelsea, the Chelsea. cut? Yeah. yeah. Can you turn a little more towards the camera again so we can see? That way. Um, That's great. Which seems like it's going to be harsh, but I think leaving all this softness really makes that haircut look softer. And it's just really, I just already love what's happening. So now I'm just literally pulling everything out. But you do want to be mindful of what's underneath because you can get kind of lost in there too. And right here, I'm doing that like short to long. See, already it's kind of just sort of 
happening. Like you can see it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe through here, I do need to go these pieces right here, just a little shorter. Um, I'm just gonna, I wanna cut that, but I'm just gonna, it's hard to leave that. <laughs> It is hard. <laughs> Once it's gone, it's gone. We have we Hannah at home. We always cut it later. Huh? We have Hannah at home watching this, and she's loving this cut. Hi, Hannah. So I'm sure she's going to want to get it. <laughs> Come on in. Come is on Hannah in, Hannah. Is Hannah wanting to cut her Come now? on down, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the next contestant. <laughs> You're the next contestant. Miss Hannah from Tallahassee. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Miss Hannah from Hayward. Remember Travis when we used to do like Oprah on the couches upstairs at Bumble? Yeah. <laughs> I did a whole quarantine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. talk show with my, all my talk show fantasies. So now I'm just holding this straight out. Yeah. I think one of the things that you're doing that's so good is that you're being really respectful of the swirl. Yeah. Of like not, yeah. you're going short, but you're also adjusting it for where it naturally lives. And it, I think it's one of those things sometimes we get so technical that we pick it up and we cut it all so it's even and then yeah. it's like, oh, that is not. Yeah, it's jumping up too much. Or it's too flat or it's doing all those things. See, I really, I'm super kind of into all of that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that through here, I have to admit, it looks chunky. So I'm just going to do that now because I don't, I don't really want to go back and do five haircuts. <laughs> yeah, that was like a little chunky monkey-ish. And sometimes it's like when you see those heavy bits, just address it, you know, just address that. Okay. So I just couldn't leave it alone. But already, I mean, I, I just think like you can see that all happening. Um, what was the, um, the product? that you were saying the aircraft, is that what we're gonna? Oh no, the, the, the puck, puck, whatever you call that yeah. thing. So right now. No, no, the one next oh. to it. That one, the little puck, the white puck, or oh, the. Wasn't this the one you were, the one yeah. First so I'm gonna put a little okay. of this in. I'm not familiar with this product, so I'm not gonna go buck wild crazy. But I, I feel like her hair, I want it to feel kind of chunky. And then. So let's do that. So this is kind of a good point right now in the haircut. And I remember the first person I saw do that, adding the product as they were going along was Kobe. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's so smart. You know, she'd do the grooming cream. Yeah. And that, and cause Kobe kind of when she was done with the cut, it was so genius. Cause it was just like, she was done. <laughs> like there was no five minutes of styling. She was right. just, as she went, she yeah. was done, and she did a little shimmy shake, and it mm -hmm. was like, it's, shimmy shake. if you ever get a chance to watch, um, why can't I think of her last name? Kobe. Alcantar. Alcantar, um, cut she, hair. She's amazing. She works for Orbe. She works for Orbe. So she I always with Orbe. shout her out because she, it's, to me, is someone who's she just- She changed her, my life. Her oh. last name is Alicantar. Al, how do you say it? Alicantar, right? Alicantar, yeah. Alcantar. She's just um, does beautiful cuts, Alcantar. and her aesthetic is just so, so cool, and it's so Kobe, and it's yeah. so um, like she's kind of like a Tom, like they just have their thing. Like yeah. you do it, and you're like, oh, that's like a Kobe. Yeah. So with this cut, and I think as I've been getting older, I do like to get to that point when I'm done with the cut where I'm like, I don't want to do a five hour blow dry, and if I have that, I'm like, I trained my assistant. I'm like, oh, you can do that. I just like to be kind of done. Yeah. We have D online right now saying that uh, they were a model for Colby oh, on yeah. stage and got this haircut and it was the best haircut they ever oh, had. Oh, wow. That's kind of. Maybe I'm channeling Colby. Yeah. That's one thing about the Bay Area and coming back. It's so, so nice because you just have 
so many memories and so many like hairdressers here. I don't know if it's still the same. We were all so connected. Yeah, there was definitely a culture yeah. of education here in San And I remember kind of following Kobe's career, you know, and being like, oh, that's what Kobe did. Oh, then she went to Bumble, you know, and I was like, oh, those are all the things I want to do. Mm -hmm. But Kobe, she never got into editorial. She was just always just about hair cutting. cutting hair. Mm -hmm. And it was, she also, I think her style of styling the hair was because she didn't really like to style hair. You know, sometimes she'd be like, can you just come and do a little thingy thing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I like what you have though, but you know, and that, and then she has that clientele, you know, that works, you know. If you don't want to do really overly styled Upper East Side hair ladies, then just don't do that hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they won't come to you. Yeah. I actually kind of like, like doing that too though sometimes. I love doing a Yeah, a like I like out. a big crazy. Yeah. Because you can still do your version of that. Yeah. And I think that's why those women will come to a, like a cool salon. You know, they're like, oh, I want to be cool. Yeah. And you give them a cool haircut, but they still want the three. I just did a blow dry with him because I liked how he did this certain blowout. And he's like, you can come on a Sunday and I can show you. What and did he it, do? It was just like yeah, the way he twisted, but it always is very mermaidy. Yeah. And I do that twist out, blow out, but I just was like, how did yours always come out? And he showed me. Who you know? is it? Mauricio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, who I work with, if Mauricio's watching, hey. Um, so I just asked him, you know, because I was like, I try, I keep trying it, and I'm not getting it like how Mauricio does. And then he showed me what he did, and it was more of a twist and a pull out, and it's a technique that he does. What are you guys kind of thinking so far? Are you into it or? Love it. Um, it's so good on you, Jamie. Does anybody have questions or things you want to know about me? <laughs> New York, fashion week. I want to know where you got your razor and your from. I got it from Karina. It's from Pony. Oh. It's like my cherished pink razor now. I like, if I lose it, I'll, I'm literally going to be devastated. <laughs> These, these ones are, these were like the very first razors we ever did, and we don't have them anymore, so I'm sorry. But we do, have, have, we do have pony razors, and you can send them or spray paint them, or yeah. um, Eric has an a Instagram account where they will design your handle. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it's I like think it's great because people want to like have a collection of razors that all look different, and so I had... Um, it was actually a friend of Misha's, uh, oh. Wonderpuss Octopus, oh, yeah. and she puffy painted mine. Oh, uh, and I can cute. grab it and show you guys, and it's really, she customized it for the colors I wanted, and we talked about it, and it's great. It just, it was nice having something different then. Yeah, I wanted pink. Pink was like my color for pony. You know, I wanted it to be like a jean provocateur, <laughs> but for hair, because that's their colors too. Uh, what was it? Pink, pink pony? pony? Oh, I don't yeah. remember it. I don't remember that place. Can everybody see what I'm doing? Okay. We're good. Sometimes it can be a little. Um, for me, you know, like, I'm not, not necessarily scary or whatever, but it just sometimes makes me nervous with little, like, uh, what to leave out around the face, like how much to leave out, mm -hmm. and how thick, and um, so I'm always working on that, and I'm always kind of um, 
figuring out what I like, what works, what doesn't. And I like that you're leaving so much and leaving it so long because yeah. like he said, he wants to work on all that at the end. And so as it dries, you can start to see. But I, I didn't leave so much that I'm gonna feel like I'm doing two haircuts. It's literally like, this could be the cut, you know what I mean? I just. Yeah, totally could Like be. this could actually be the haircut. Mm -hmm. And I would be really into that. Me too. It just kind of in a weird way made it look longer, right? So the top section here, um, I'm going to continue with the pie section. Let me do this side first. I am going to lift this up a little more. And there's a lot, just a lot of hair. So I'm going to be pretty aggressive with the weight removal. And so I'm kind of going back because I want to see, okay, yeah. I want to see, I want all that left out, like kind of to this point. So I'm going to go, I'm really going to just do it in one little shot here. I won't, no, I'm not, I lied. And I, I do, there is a difference if you take the weight out first as opposed to cutting the line and then taking it out. Um, I always feel like the line is a little softer and more diffuse if you do weight removal first and then cut the line as opposed to doing it after. Karina? Uh, I, like, I like doing it before because also there's a lot of yeah. hair to hold on to so you can get in there and really like Get in and just yeah, I have a little better tension holding it Oops, instead there it is. of cutting it first. I love it so much. Thank so you. cute. I had a good feeling. And I, I think it really is just, I feel very inspired because I think I got to see her before and I had a reference and I thought about it and um, yeah, you get to kind of plan. So it's kind of fun, you know. That's why it's, it's nice with clients to, sometimes you're lucky enough to have a client who's like, go for it. But it's also sometimes playing a little safe with clients that first time or the first few times is okay. And then they're like, do whatever, mm -hmm. you and know. And they trust you. And then they trust you. Yeah, um, it's like a, the first date, you know. I don't want to go too far. <laughs> Or maybe you do, you know, you just never know. <laughs> okay. Cute. I love the long pieces. So I'm kind of just kind of going back, you know, it's like, again, like I'm being very visual with this now. I'm like, wait, no. We can really do up to here short. And over here, how it, it moves. You know, I see that right here, and I'm like. Can you turn her towards oh, the yeah, camera sorry. so people can see what's Woo. inside? Oop, there it is. And there it is. And there it is. <laughs> My Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reference. Which is a dumb reference. You know, and I just, I go through, 
and I'm just feeling it, really, just. See how you, I just went through, and now I'm, I like the flat through here. She has a lot of hair up here. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of hair. There you go. Um, I am going to wet this down, but I, I already see it. Um, I want this. I really like the front super long, but I want to cut it a little and put some little shorter bits so she can also do, you know, that, which I know it's like that's getting kind of annoying. Um, Can I, I show really you my favorite piece? This is my favorite piece favorite right here. Piece? This one. Okay. I love that. I won't cut her then. Isn't that pretty? It's soft. <laughs> Look at that. So I love all this, but obviously it's maybe, I don't know. I mean, I'm really, I, I really actually do like it, how it is. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through and cut this a little shorter, and I might just sort of leave these a little... Oh, on the longer side. So that's kind of sometimes how my thought process is to, you know, when people are like, I need to know exactly what it's going to look like. I'm like, okay, well, I can exactly do this. But sometimes when people just let me do my thing a little, um, and I think my clients know that, they're just like, oh, if I too, do too much art directing, it makes you nervous as a stylist because you're like, oh God, I can't like I do what I would do. And she was just every cut and I was just like, and I was honest with her. I was like, yeah, I really honestly do my worst work when I'm being totally micromanaged. And she didn't come back because <laughs> she didn't like her haircut, you know? And I was just like, I told you. If you would have shut up and just let me do your hair. I mean, I like a collaboration. Like, I don't like to be that person, but like, no, I'm not. You know, I want to know, but I hate when people are like, well, no, my client, my old stylist for 30 years used to do a twist and then a cut. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, I don't do that, though. Like, I do what I do, you know? And not that I wouldn't do that, but I just think if you're going to someone, if you're going to go to Karina or go to you, like you're going to have your things that you do. And it's just like, you want your clients to trust you as opposed to having a full, a full clientele of annoying clients. And I see people with that because they're always trying to please them. And sometimes you kind of have to stand up, you know, a little bit in a nice way. I or just had trust that. Say us. like, can you my can you cut my hair like that way? How you said like you know this person used to do this exactly this way, and then I would try and I'd always be like I'm not really sure like this like I, I don't know. So it's better to be like well I have my own way of doing things. If you don't mind, I I would like to just do it the way I do. Because I feel like sometimes I can get there, the way I know how to get there and. Um, and I feel more confident that way. And so, I also think that's what we do here is we just want to add to your repertoire. We don't want to change the way you do hair or tell you what you're doing is wrong. It's just more about here's some more new cool things that you can add to what you're already doing. So I'm going to pull these straight out and just cut that. Oh, really? Nice. Okay, cool. I know, I like it kind of just this exaggerated. Again, like this isn't something I really can explain exactly what I'm doing, because this is a little more of my signature. And as I go around, I like, I like this length, not right here. I don't like that, it feels chunk, I want it to be. So that's when I'm kind of like uh, molding, or some people say carving. You know, they carve with the razor. Um, and it is kind of like a, a car, you know, I get that. It's like, like an exacto knife. Yeah. Arts and crafts. <laughs> Everybody has their own um, language, too. And I, I always think that's kind of fun to hear. Oh, I would never say this one word, but it, it's kind of interesting. And you're yeah. like, that's a, that's a cute way, you know. Yeah. 
And then all of a sudden it becomes like, oh, I want petals in my hair. And you're yeah, like, yeah. but you know what they mean. You know, yeah, you know yeah, that right. from... Um, from like Instagram. Yeah, you know, or... And all the names. There's all these like names, you know, like what was the new thing? The butterfly haircut that just looks like long layers. Oh yeah, the butterfly haircut, <laughs> the wolf haircut. You're like, oh, the, you mean long, beautiful layers? Yeah. That's always been in style. <laughs> or even just um, the curtain bang, which me and Karina, like, I feel like we've always liked a Bridget Bardot. So for me, it's always just like, a, I always explain it like Bridget Bardot. And then all of a sudden it became the curtain bang. Yeah, totally. I personally am not a fan of the curtain bang, that word, but I love a curtain bang. Yeah. You know, I think it's, it's so pretty. It's just like people renaming stuff yeah. that's just always been around. And that, is, that can be annoying as a hairdresser.